<laughs> I love it. Oh, oh fun. Three miles in the books. Nice and easy. Well, that was great. Shoes. One second here. Oh, nice. I love it. Goodyear logo. I love it. I love it. I love it with that hyper burst midsole. So it is a. It is about 50 degrees out in Denver, but I'm, I got a little overzealous thinking I could wear shorts today. It is still January. Better put some pants on. It's freezing. Also, the shots today aren't going to be quite as good because I broke uh, the, the, the pole that holds the gimbal that holds the GoPro. So the shots aren't going to be quite as uh, zesty, if you know what I mean. All right, let's lace it up. Now, before I put the right shoe on, Hopefully you can see that uh, one of the tags says Hyperburst, that's the midsole foam. Uh, it's a patented technology from Skechers. But then also, you see there Goodyear, 120 years of quality, performance, and technology in rubber. So on the bottom of the Skechers Go Run Ride 8, it's, uh, it's got the, the black is the rubber, but it says Goodyear there on the bottom. And I, I love when big corporations work with other big corporations and so I don't know how Skechers made that connection with Goodyear to place uh, their rubber, the Goodyear rubber, on the outsole of their shoes but I just I think it's so innovative uh, to see that cross-pollination between two completely kind of different industries you know the automobile industry and the, the running industry or the sportswear industry so I think it's neat and uh, I think Adidas has a do they, does Adidas work with Goodyear as well? It's either Goodyear or maybe it's Firestone. I can't remember. I think it's Goodyear actually. So anyway, that's pretty neat. Good work there, Skechers. Okay, let's get this on. Surprise, surprise, the family's here at the park. <laughs> He's ready to rock and roll. All right, let's go, buddy. Papa, can you get my bike? Oh yeah, true love made it to the park. Yeah, with the baby bump, baby bump. <laughs> She's dancing, there's Seth. Hi, hon. Hey. We're back. <laughs> We're just hanging out, eating food. <laughs> I love it. Oh, hon. Three miles in the books. Nice and easy. Oh, that was great. We're just coming back. Just coming back, everyone. Nice and easy. Go run ride eight. We'll get you the, uh, not full review. First impression in the studio. Hun. Those are legit my favorite colors. Kelly green and navy blue. Those are wedding colors. Oh, nice, nice. Two thumbs way, way up there for me. <laughs> Boom. Oh, hi, Michael. All right. <laughs> we'll see you there. <laughs> Here we go. First impressions of the Skechers Go Run Ride 8. I realize I'm a little late to the game. This shoe was released last fall. I think I was in the midst of uh, getting ready for the World Mountain Running Championships right around when this shoe came out and so I just was unable to put it through the paces for all of you last fall but now we're getting to it and there it is on the side quick quick uh, little side note on branding I'm a little surprised that Skechers did not put their signature S on both sides of the shoe because I want everyone to be able to see the S right there but it's going the wrong direction compared to all the other shoes in the studio anyway just a little side piece for Skechers to consider putting the S on both sides of their shoes okay let's dive into it um first impressions let's see a roomier toe box i did not feel scrunched at all through that toe box uh, so i guess i'll just dive into fit right now as well i went true to size spot on true to size i guess you i've said this many times i prefer a little bit of a more a little more of a snug fit 
through the entire shoe. I don't like to feel any sort of slipping when I'm out there running. So today, like my toes were just kind of dancing around in the toe box a little bit too much, um, which actually surprised me a little bit. And I don't know if it's because of, and let's dive into it, the upper, if it's the engineered knit upper. Uh, it's, a, it's a little more flexible than I expected. So meaning that it's a little more malleable to the top of your foot. Very comfortable. I will say that about the overall upper on this shoe. No issues with the eyelet chain rubbing on the top of the foot. It laid really nice and flat on the top of the foot. And I still, I actually put the cardboard back in. I'll take that out just so you can see. Um, and also so far no scrunching up on the toe box as well, unlike the Beacon V2. And before I forget, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned this on the run actually, the Beacon, it felt, the midsole ride felt like the Beacon as far as first impression. Uh, so if you like the Beacon, there's a good chance you'll like the Skechers Go Run Ride 8. Uh, no issues with the tongue. It's a, it's, a it's a normal tongue on the Skechers GRR8, not gusseted, meaning it's not uh, connected to the outer walls of the upper as far as that tongue is concerned. And then um, I was gonna save this for later, but let's just keep rolling. My drawback for the shoe and probably my only drawback thus far, I was slipping around just a little bit on the run today, three miles, 5K, uh, 850 a mile. I'm still taking it really easy as I come back from the runner's knee injury. Uh, so I don't know what's going on. I'll keep you posted uh, after 50 miles for the full review if the slipping continues when I wear different socks other than smart wool. Who knows? Maybe the different fabrics just don't mesh together, if you know what I mean. Let's get the uh, the drop. So 30 millimeter stack height in the heel, uh, 24 millimeter in the forefoot for a six millimeter drop. That's basically right where I like it. Felt great today. And just so you know, the formation of the hyperburst midsole, what they do is they, they inject uh, CO2 dur during the formation process. This is a patented technology from Skechers. And what happens is it traps little air pockets inside the midsole, which helps with uh, keeping the midsole nice and lightweight, but also a little bit of bounce. And I would agree today on the three mile run, they felt kind of bouncy out there. So if you're looking for a bouncy shoe, if you like that feeling through your gait cycle, there are the GR, uh, the Go Run Ride 8 is for you. <laughs> and onto the outsole, the bottom of the shoe, you can see the Goodyear rubber, the black, and then also the exposed hyperburst midsole foam. I kind of like when companies blend on the outsole uh, rubber and exposed midsole. I think it cuts down on weight. And on that note, in men's size nine, we're looking at 8.7 ounces for men's size nine. And there it is on your screen in grams. So this is a very, very lightweight daily training shoe. So overall, uh, now listen, if you're going at high speeds on wet roads, I'm not sure this outsole is gonna grip incredibly well. Maybe the Goodyear rubber would help increase, you would think if it's, a, if it's Goodyear rubber, it would increase the traction a little bit. So anyway, oh, also I wanted to mention, so far, so the, the Skechers Max Road 4 was actually one of my favorite shoes of 2019, but the only issue on the uh, Max Road 4 is you can see the pods there, the difference in the outsole patterns. I'm not sure I like the pods on the bottom of the uh, the Max Road 4. So I think I'm leaning toward the Go Run Ride 8 as my preferred outsole pattern when it comes to Skechers running shoes. So anyway, just wanted to point that out for all of you. So far, I don't know. I think I like what I'm seeing on the GRR8 better. Now, how will I use the Go Run Ride 8 moving forward? Most likely an easy day shoe, but I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna take it up to that 8 10 mile uh, type of day. And I'll also take it to higher speeds as well, like 6.30 a mile, 6.45 a mile, just to see how that midsole performs. Overall, my general conclusion is that the Go Run Ride 8 is a simple shoe, okay? They're not overthinking it. It, it gets the job done. And I think, okay, price point, $115. That is awesome. If you could get now, the question will be, is that $115 spread out over 300 miles, over 500 miles, over 800 miles? I don't know. I'd be shocked if it goes over 
400, frankly, but maybe it will. And probably my guess is that the midsole would last past 300, 400 miles. My concern right now would be the upper. I would, I bet there's going to be reports out there. Now it looks like it's a well-constructed upper, but it's definitely not the most I can, I can already sense. It's like, it's not an Asics. It's not a Mizuno, uh, not even close. So anyway, we shall see if the $115 price tag stands up to the test of time. Sound good, everyone. All right. And that question of the day, who has run in Skechers ever, like any shoe from Skechers ever. And part two, who is going to buy a Skechers running shoe in 2020? Is there a, whether it's racing, whether it's trail, whether it's training, whether it's track, whatever the case may be, are you going to pick up a Skechers running shoe in 2020? I'll be curious to hear what everyone thinks about Skechers moving forward into 2020, kind of like I said in the car today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Love you guys. Oh, just a good Saturday. Kind of keeping it a little, a little simpler today as far as filming goes, but we got it done here in the studio. All right, everyone. We're going to toss it back on the right to the Skechers Max Road 4. Shout out in the road running shoes of 2019. My favorites from 2019. That'll be on the right. And then on the left, we'll toss it back to the New Balance Beacon V2 full review since I mentioned that shoe today. That'll be on the left. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.